welcome to the First United Methodist Church online worship service. Today's service is performed by Pastor Aaron Ackney. Now here is today's service. Claim our hope as morning reclaims the light of day. O 
us as our sins should be punished. He has not repaid us for the evil we have done. For the Lord's love for those who respect him continues forever and ever.
prayer. Father, as we come to this moment now in our worship today, I ask that either through me or in spite of me, you would speak to us and our lives would be changed. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. So we're starting a new sermon series today, and in that I have some good news and some bad news. So let me share the bad news first. Life hurts. That's the bad news. Life hurts. If we are alive, if our hearts are beating and our lungs are breathing, we have been hurt. Maybe aches, pains, bruises, injuries, headaches, heartaches, toothaches, broken relationships, <laughs> mental stress. At some point, we've been used, maybe even abused. Every one of us are scarred. That's the truth. That has happened to us. Physically, emotionally, and spiritually, or body, soul, and spirit. No questions, no exceptions, no escaping. Life hurts, period. Yes, some people have more pain than others, but everybody has pain from being hurt. That's bad news. I was thinking, have you ever thought about hurt and pain as coming in <laughs> flavors? We have multiple flavors of pain in this room this morning. I remember when I was a young boy taking a trip to the ice cream shop, which then was, the big thing was they had 31 flavors of ice cream. You remember that? You remember going and everyone probably got a different, a different cone. And you know, we're in a different era now, but do you ever remember swapping licks of cones? I do, I do. But you know what? Hurt has more flavors of pain than ice cream. In fact, each one of us in here has our own flavor of pain. And relative to hurts, you don't see anyone swapping licks of pain, do you? No. Might be broken friendships, a broken love relationship, separation or divorce, failing a class, unable to pay bills, foreclosure, losing someone in death, losing a pet, a medical problem, an injury, a disease, depression, some ugly secret, a guilty conscience, an unhealthy habit or addiction, trouble getting along with parents or children or your boss or a co-worker or a teacher or a team member or a neighbor, being party to gossip, having to move to a new location, bankruptcy, suffering from some emotion like envy or jealousy or greed or retribution, being cheated. I mean, there are more flavors of pain than we would like to even think about. And not only are there multiple flavors of pain, but there's also multiple degrees of hurt and pain. Some pains 
are rather insignificant, like a brush burn, or a folded sock in your shoe, or being teased, or being tricked by someone. And then other pains can double you over, knock you down, childbirth, or kidney stones, or being slandered, or being cheated. I want to share several lessons I think we can gain from pain as we look at it from our Christian perspective. Number one, pain is everywhere because life hurts. Everyone in life gets hurt. We all hurt. Do this a moment. Just indulge me. Look around. Shift in your seats. Turn around. Take a look. Try to see everybody. Try to see if you can focus on every person here. Just, you know, as you glaze across there, gaze across there. I want you to look around. And when you look around, I want you to know this. Think about this. Everybody you see either has been or is hurt. Now maybe we can't tell where, maybe we can't tell how, but I'm assuring you that everybody here is hurt. We share hurt together. If we could keep that perspective in our minds, that could create great empathy and unity among us. That simple truth right there, if we could keep it in our minds, could change a lot of things. Everyone has hurt in their life. As I make you aware of that again today, how does that make you feel? Because that's a good lesson for us. When we can keep that perspective in front of us, it will allow us to be less judgmental. We truly can be more sympathetic. If we could just see everyone for how they hurt. And here's another sobering truth. We all have hurt someone else. We each have hurt someone else. Look around again. Indulge me here. Literally, look around. Because everyone you can see in here has hurt someone else. Again, if we can keep that perspective, do you realize how that brings us together? No one escapes pain and hurt. Everybody understands pain and hurt. Now here's a lie that's out there. Once you become a Christian, you don't have pain anymore. Wrong. That's not true. Joy and peace were never intended to eliminate pain. Are Christians alive? Are we breathing? Are our hearts beating? Yes, they were hurt. And we have hurt someone else. Life hurts. We all know pain. Somewhere, somehow, we all identify with pain. Jesus said it this way. In the world, you'll have trouble. Or another version says, the world will make you suffer. Or another translation says, here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. Life hurts. Life comes with pain and suffering. Lesson number two. 
Pain can keep me from living life to the fullest. Pain can pull me away from the abundant life that's been promised me. And in that, I want us to know that denial is what perpetuates our pain. Denial is the first enemy for us to defeat as we fight pain. Now, denial is the self-protecting behavior that keeps us from honestly facing the truth about ourselves and our pain. And as I'm saying this, I want you to recognize how this sermon ties into the sermon from last week and how this sermon ties into our Thursday email. See, this all fits together. God's Word always does that. Here's the problem. We try to get out of or to avoid having to deal with our pain because we don't like it. It's messy. We deny the pain or we ignore it or we try to minimize it or we try to hide it or we try to put it off. Anything except dealing with it. I want you to think about masks for a moment. Why does anyone wear a mask? To hide behind, right? So, so we maybe can go incognito somewhere. You know what I mean? So let's switch from literal masks and let's think about wearing masks figuratively for a moment. Putting on a mask, putting on a front, putting on a show, playing make-believe like you're someone else, hiding behind some sort of facade that we put out there. You know what I'm talking about, because every one of us has done that at some time or another. We wear masks to cover up something, don't we? Different people have different kinds of masks. But we use a mask to hide our real self, to hide our pain. Here's how that happens. People mostly react to what we see. So when someone's wearing a mask, that is what we see. When they're putting on a facade, that is what we see. That way we lots of times can end up relating to each other's masks. And that's exactly how and why we can get surprised about somebody at some point. Oh my gosh. It's a huge issue in relationships. It's painful. And think about that in relationship to our faith lives. Do others know what we believe? Or do we have a mask on in front of them to avoid any painful issues with them? Listen, denial and masks, they're unhealthy. It's a form of lying and deceiving. God says through Paul, stop lying to each other. Tell the truth, for we all are parts of each other, and when we lie to each other, we are hurting ourselves. Ephesians chapter 4. Now here 
are some of the effects of denial. It disregards our feelings. It exhausts us. It never lets us grow. It isolates us. It abandons relationships and it lengthens our pain. It's bad stuff. Facing and admitting the truth about myself is the starting point of overcoming my pain. And pain is not God's plan for us, church. Jesus said, I've come so that you could have life and have it to the full. So we must learn to deal with our pain. To stop denying. Take off the mask. Here's my last lesson about pain. On my own, I can do little or nothing about my pain. That's the truth. If I had the power to stop my pain, I would not have allowed my pain to begin with. I would have already stopped it. And I would definitely stop it now because pain hurts. I don't like that. Here's how Paul describes the situation we are in in our human lives. Well-known words from chapter 7 in Romans. In fact, I don't understand why I act the way I do. I don't do what I know is right, and I do the things I hate. Although I don't do what I know is right, I agree that the law is good. So I am not the one doing these evil things. The sin that lives in me is what does them. I know that my selfish desires won't let me do anything that is good. Even when I want to do right, I cannot. Instead of doing what I know is right, I do wrong. And so, if I don't do what I know is right, I am no longer the one doing these evil things. The sin that lives in me is what does them. In every part of me, I discover something fighting against my mind, and it makes me a prisoner of sin, and it controls everything I do. What a miserable person I am. So that's the bad news. Life hurts. Now, for the good news. The good news is God heals. And in relationship to last week, that would be? Wow. Seven days can just take it all away. Jeez. Nevertheless, God. Yeah. God's healing is available for every pain. I want you to say that out loud with me so you can hear yourself say it. God's healing is available for every pain. There is healing for every flavor of pain and every degree of pain. Jesus said, I've come so you can have life and have it to the full. I have told you this so that you might have peace in your hearts because of me. While you are in the world, you will suffer. But cheer up, because I have defeated the world. At some point, pain has to be dealt with. Otherwise, we will live daily in suffering. And that could actually cause us to die in pain. It's God's choice to overcome pain with healing. That's what God's forgiveness 
is all about. That's what God's love and grace is all about. That's what salvation is all about. And know that God planned salvation from the beginning. So we know pain is not God's plan for us. That's the good news of the Bible. Bad news, life hurts. Good news, God heals. Think of a little child suddenly cries out in pain and mom and dad rush to the scene. One of the first questions they ask is, where does it hurt? Show me where it hurts. So let me ask the question this morning. Where does it hurt? You know when we have physical pains, we get tested. You know, the normal tests, blood work, x-rays, CAT scans, or maybe the big test today is the MRI, the magnetic resonance imaging. Know this, in God's word, God recommends a daily MRI test in our lives. <laughs> Try to get your insurance company to <laughs> sign off on that. That's because God wants us to overcome our pain. And to do that, we have to know where our pain is. When does this MRI take place? During our daily meditation, church. We connect with God, and He examines us. He checks us. He finds out. He determines. He pinpoints where we are hurt so it can be addressed. You know, you can think and have some fun with your imagination. An MRI test to check where we're miserable and masked and mean and mad or where we're restricted and rattled and rude and rebellious or where we're incapacitated and elusive and irritated or intense. Where? What's the pain? I encourage all of us to schedule our daily MRI with God. To sit under the Master's Reality interview <laughs> with us. Make it a date. Sit with the Holy Spirit of God. See where your pains are. Allow under prayerful examination the truth of the Holy Spirit. Allow the exposure of God's penetrating light into your life. Realize that He can identify with you where your pains really are. Where you hurt. And then you can face the reality about your state of being. You can stop denying the pain. You can stop avoiding the hurt. You can be open. You can be honest. You can face the truth. Because the truth is the key to our well-being in God's kingdom. Without the truth, there can be no abundant life, and we can have no good relationships. It's the truth that leads us to our healing. Jesus said, you are truly my disciples if you live as I tell you. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. There it is. Free of guilt, free of shame, free from hiding, free from suffering. The bad news is life hurts. The good news is God heals. And as we have been hurt, so we might be healed. And as we have brought hurt to others, 
so we may bring others to healing. And that's where we come into this big time, church. Because God wants us, his people, the church, to be the central place of prayer and healing in the world. This is supposed to be a safe place, a sanctuary, where people can come in, they can take off their masks, they can allow the truth into their life, and they can be healed. God's love does that. That's why we must be practicing God's love. If we can achieve that goal, People will be seeking us out. Everyone is hurt. Everyone is seeking healing. And if we can get known as a healing place, we'll get crowded in here. In our upcoming worships, we're going to be looking at God's plan for us to be healed and then for us to offer God's healing to others. That healing begins, the ultimate healing that we know about is right here at this table. And so we're beginning this series on the Sunday when we can share in the ultimate healing God offers us. As we come to the sacrament, I remind us that this is Lord's table, it's not our table. So we don't really control who comes to this table. The Lord does. You don't have to be a member of this church. You technically don't have to be a member of any church. You simply have to be able to accept the invitation that God gives. And if you want to lead a new life, and from now on follow in his ways of love, you're invited to this table and to the healing that God offers here. Christ our Lord invites to this table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let's join together in this prayer of confession and then each of us take a moment in our own personal prayers. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have heard not heard the cry of the need. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear this good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory be to God. Amen. Says, heal the sick. Raise the dead to life again. 
Heal those who have skin diseases and force demons out of people. I give you these powers freely, so help other people freely. Therefore, as forgiven and reconciled people, let us offer God ourselves and our gifts. No. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance 
of men. And when supper was over, he took the cup and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of men. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Pour out now your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. And by your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory be yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory forever. Amen. What does this mean in our lives right now? We're facing a lot of places where we need healing. There's a lot of anxiety, some anger, some frustration, a lot of doubt, even some fear on the part of people as they look at what is going on. And let's just say in particular with COVID, but not limited to COVID, and they don't know what to do. Church, this is our moment. Life hurts. God heals. Nevertheless, God. And God's healing is greater than any hurt. There's an answer for COVID. There's an answer to it. Maybe we don't have it quite yet. Maybe we're still working on it. But all these people that worry that COVID is with us forever and, and we don't know what we're going to do, wrong. Church, wrong. And so we're the ones that need to be speaking that strength and that hope and that encouragement. Because if we don't, who will? No one else has this message. God has put us probably in the best place in my lifetime for the church to shine. But if we're quiet, If we pull back, if we sit low, that'll never happen. 
and we will miss our chance. We stand for our final song. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. God bless you until we meet again.